Welcome to Electron Line. In the last several videos, we've been looking at the apparent mass of a photon. Even though a photon doesn't have mass, it sure acts like it does. And because it acts like it has mass, it also acts like it has momentum. The Broglie wondered, well, if we turn the tables, since photons act like particles, maybe particles act like photons, which means that particles may have waves just like photons do. The question is, do particles have waves? And it turns out the Broglie was onto something. And let's see why he thought along those lines. First of all, we know that the momentum of any particle is equal to the mass times its velocity. Of course, if it becomes a particle that moves very fast, close to the speed of light, then of course we have to say that the momentum is equal to gamma times mv, where gamma is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. In other words, we have to take into account the relativistic effect of moving very fast. But going back to the concept of momentum equals mass times velocity, let's say what that would mean if we look at the momentum of a photon. The momentum of a photon, the momentum of a photon would also have to be mass times its velocity. So that would have to be its apparent mass times its velocity, which would be the speed of light. And we already know from before that the apparent mass of a photon is E over C squared. So we could write this as E over C squared times C, which is equal to E over C. And of course, for a photon, the energy of a photon is equal to H times F over... So instead of energy, it's H times F. We still have over C. And of course, we can replace F in terms of lambda, we can say that f times lambda equals the speed of light, or f is equal to c divided by lambda. So if we replace f by c over lambda, this would become h c over c times lambda, and the c's would cancel out, and we get h over lambda. In other words, the momentum of a photon is equal to h over lambda. All right, if that is the case, and by all apparent measures, it is the case. The momentum of a photon is equal to h over lambda, h over lambda, which means that we can say that the wavelength of a photon is equal to h divided by the momentum of a photon. And of course, the momentum of a photon can be written as h divided by the apparent mass times its velocity, which would be the speed of light. Now, this is where de Broglie took a leap of faith. He said, there seems to be so much relationship between photons and small particles. Perhaps particles move with waves as well in like waves, so they will have wavelengths. And so the wavelength of a particle should also be Planck's constant divided by its mass times the speed of light. Or in this case, of course, particles wouldn't move at the speed of light. It would be the mass times its velocity, because that would be the momentum of a particle. So he said that the wavelength of a particle would be equal to Planck's constant divided by the mass of the particle times its velocity. And of course, if they're moving extremely fast, instead of writing m times v, we would have to take into account that relativistic effect. So at high velocities, v approaching c, we would have to say that the wavelength of a particle is equal to Planck's constant divided by gamma times m times v. And of course, that would be the rest mass of the particle times gamma. So we can either write the wavelength of a particle like this, or we can write the wavelength of a particle like this, depending upon whether or not we have to take into account the relativistic effects. Now, if we take a look at that, notice that there's really two quantities here. For a given particle, the mass would not change. And of course, Planck's constant wouldn't change. That stays constant. Only the velocity can change. So as a particle moves faster and faster and faster, that would be a larger denominator, the wavelength would get smaller and smaller and smaller.
So for a particle like an electron moving faster and faster and faster, the wavelengths would go from large to small to very small, and the wavelengths would become extremely small as the velocity becomes very high. In addition to that, notice that gamma, which is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, you know that this quantity will always be greater or equal to 1. It will be equal to 1 when v goes to 0, but it becomes greater than 1 when v is larger than 0. And as v approaches c, this becomes infinitely large. In other words, as the velocity of the particle gets closer and closer and closer to the speed of light, then the wavelength will become extremely small because this will become a very large number. If we were to graph the wavelength versus velocity, so here's the wavelength, Oop, and that's not a very good looking lambda, that's yeah, better, and velocity, and notice that if this is the maximum speed a particle can have, where v equals c, notice that you get a 1 over x kind of curve initially, so the velocity would, the wavelength would get smaller, smaller, smaller with increasing velocity, and of course it would continue like this if we didn't have to take into account relativistic effects, and eventually this would asymptotically reach the horizontal axis, but because of the gamma here, as you start approaching the speed of light, then gamma would start kicking in and the wavelengths would start getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and you asymptotically, of course the wavelength would go to zero as you get closer and closer to the speed of light. So that's how the wavelength of a fast-moving particle like an electron or proton would change with increasing velocity and also take into account the relativistic effects. So that's what the broadly meant by particles act like waves, act like photons, and the smaller they are, the smaller the mass, the faster they move, the smaller the wavelength of the particles. And that's what we mean by the de Broglie waves.